critical angle, which we symbolize theta sub c, is the incident angle for which the angle of refraction will be 90 degrees. Let's take an example here. The solid line indicates the boundary between a less optically dense medium and a more optically dense medium. The dashed line indicates the normal. On the top of this picture we have the less optically dense or the faster medium and down below we have the slower medium. If light originates in the slower medium, it's going to bend away from the normal when it emerges into the faster medium. If we have a slightly different angle of incidence that is indicated by the dashed blue line, it's again going to bend away from the normal. Now you can imagine that as we continue to increase the angle of incidence, there might be some angle, which we call the critical angle, for which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees, namely that the refracted ray goes exactly along the boundary. And that is called the critical angle. Any angle of incidence beyond the critical angle and all the light, not just some of it, is reflected, completely reflected and is unable to escape into the faster medium. At an incident angle less than 48.6 degrees, light in water is partially reflected and partially refracted. At an angle of incidence equal to 48.6 degrees, the refracted beam has a refractive angle of 90 degrees. In other words, it travels right along the boundary. Any incident angle greater than 48.6 degrees, no light is refracted. All light is reflected and the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. The equation for the critical angle is theta sub c is equal to the inverse sine of n sub r over n sub i. n sub r is the index of refraction of the refracting medium and n sub i is the index of refraction of the incident medium. Remember that in order to have this thing called a critical angle, the refracting medium has to be the less dense medium, the faster medium. The incident medium has to be the more dense medium. So n sub i will always be larger than n sub r. This equation blows up if that fraction is greater than 1, which means n sub i must be always larger, n sub r must be smaller. So let's find the critical angle for light traveling from flint glass into crown glass. Flint is the incident medium, so the 1.9 goes in the denominator, and the crown glass is index of refraction goes in the numerator. So that is the refracting medium. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode and you get a number something like 53.23 degrees. In total internal reflection, light is incident from a more optically dense medium to a less optically dense medium at an angle of incidence that is greater than the critical angle. In such a case, no light escapes from the more optically dense medium. One example of total internal reflection is in fiber optic cables. Light enters from one end and is reflected in a series of straight line paths through the cable. As long as the light hits the boundary at an angle of incidence that's greater than the critical angle, the light is completely and totally reflected. It is not refracted at all. Here are some demonstrations of total internal reflection. You can see in this top picture here, light travels into the glass, hits at greater than the critical angle, and so is reflected, and so is reflected, and so is reflected, and so is reflected, and comes out like so. Let's review. Total internal reflection occurs when light in a slower medium is incident on the boundary to a faster medium, but at an angle greater than the critical angle. The 
boundary acts like a perfect mirror with no light being refracted, only reflected, back into the slower medium. In the critical angle equation, the larger index of refraction goes in the denominator. And finally, total internal reflection cannot occur for light traveling from a faster to a slower medium, such as air to water. Total internal reflection only works when light is in a slower medium trying to get out into a faster medium.